What's up, y'all? So I just woke up about five minutes ago, so that's why my voice sounds like this. It is 8.43 in the morning. Um, I probably wake up a little bit later than a lot of you who work uh, during the day. I work at night, and I usually don't get home from work from the show until like 11.30, so that's why I sleep in a little bit uh, to get a little extra sleep. And today, we're trying a new type of video. This is called A Day in the Word, and basically what I want to do is I'm going to take you through my morning Bible study, and I'm going to show you what I do, how I do it, and hopefully it will encourage you, and hopefully it will um, you will learn something, and hopefully maybe it'll give you a new way to study the Bible if you're not used to digging into the Word. Um, and then if you are used to digging into the word, maybe it'll give you a new way to look at it or um, you'll get some new insights, I guess. And so that's what we're going to do today. Uh, before we dive in, I want to let you know sort of what I arm myself with each and every morning. This is my routine. So I wake up. Sort of the first thing I do is I go and I get myself a big old glass of water in my Chicago Bulls cup. I try and drink one or two of these a morning, and this is sort of what I snack on while I snack on the word. So I have my water. I have my NIV Bible. I have my moleskin journal. It doesn't have to be a moleskin. It can be whatever type of journal you want. And then I have a pen. I keep it simple. I keep it bare. I keep it easy. And um, right now, some of you know, um, I'm going through the Bible one chapter at a time. I've read through the Bible in a year, um, where you have to read, I think, like four or five chapters a day, and for the past like year and a half, I've been going through one chapter at a time just so I can focus a little more deeply. And today, I haven't planned this whatsoever, it's just the next chapter that's coming up. Today, I'm going to go through, I believe, Ezekiel 14. And uh, we're going to kind of go through it together, and hopefully we'll all learn something, and hopefully the Lord will speak to us all. So usually before I dive in, I will pray really quick, and I just say a quick, simple prayer, and I just ask God, uh, Lord, would you open my eyes, would you open my heart, would you open my ears, and grant me understanding, would you inspire me, would you convict me, would you move me? through your word and make me better for having read it today. And so I'll sort of let that be my prayer and we'll sort of dive in. Um, so I have my pen ready and uh, I'm just going to start reading aloud. I always read through it, read through the whole chapter just once first. So to begin, Ezekiel 14, the title is Idolaters Condemned. Some of the elders of Israel came to me and sat down in front of me. Then the word of the Lord came to me, Son of man, these men have set up idols in their hearts and put wicked stumbling blocks before their faces. Should I let them inquire of me at all? And I'm going to underline something here. And the first time I read through, I don't really write anything else down, but I do underline anything that sort of pops out at me, any phrase or word that sort of quickens my spirit. I always make sure to write it to underline it. So I'm going to take this pen and I'm going to underline this phrase, um, have set up idols in their heart. Idols in their hearts. Because since really the beginning of the Bible, we've heard about people setting up idols, but they're always physical images. And so it's interesting that they're using this phrase, set up idols in their hearts. And so I'll keep going because um, we'll revisit all the underlines later. Verse 4. Therefore, speak to them and tell them, this is what the Sovereign Lord says. When any of the Israelites set up idols in their hearts, there it is again, let's underline it, and put wicked stumbling blocks before their faces. So I'm going to go back and I'm going to underline wicked stumbling blocks before their faces. Because um, usually anything that repeats in the Bible, it repeats for a reason. Whether it's just because of the language and the translation that's been done, or um, because the Lord is really trying, or the writer is really trying to tell us something. When we want someone to know, we repeat ourselves. And then go to a prophet 
I, the Lord, will answer them myself in keeping with their great idolatry. I will do this to recapture the hearts of the people of Israel who have all deserted me for their idols. I'm going to underline, I will do this to recapture the hearts of the people of Israel. Therefore, say to the people of Israel, this is what the sovereign Lord says. Repent, turn from your idols, and renounce all your detestable practices. I'm going to underline, turn from your idols. When any of the Israelites or any foreigner residing in Israel separate themselves from me and set up idols in their hearts, there it is again, idols in their hearts. I'm also going to underline, separate themselves from me and put a wicked stumbling block before their faces, you guessed it, and then go to a prophet to inquire of me, I, the Lord, will answer them myself. I will set my face against them and make an example of them. I will remove them from my people, and they will know that I am the Lord. I'm going to underline, then they will know that I am the Lord. And if the prophet is enticed to utter a prophecy, I, the Lord, have enticed the prophet. I, the Lord, have enticed that prophet, and I will stretch out my hand against him and destroy him from among the people of Israel. They will bear their guilt. The prophet will be as guilty as the one who consults him. Then the people of Israel will no longer stray from me, nor will they defile themselves any more with all their sins. They will be my people, and I will be their God, declares the Sovereign Lord. And that is the end of that section. So usually what I would do is I would just continue through the whole next section, continuing to underline anything that quickens my spirit. But for the sake of length in this video, I'm going to now move on to sort of what I consider step two. So I'm going to open up my journal to my next free page or my next free section. Here it is. And I always write down the date, which is today. It's a Monday. It's October. What? 20th? Wow. October 20th, 2014. And I'm going to write down the chapter reference, which is Ezekiel 14. So I have all that set up right here down in this section. And then what I sort of do is I sort of skim back through the chapter and anything that I've underlined, I sort of pray over it, I meditate on it, and if anything quickens in my spirit more deeply or if a phrase um, sorts to sort of, sort of starts to, it's early, baby, it's early for me, sort of starts to um, be written into my mind, or if God speaks anything into my spirit, I write it down. So I'm going to go back through and I'm going to skim anything that I've underlined, and I'm going to write down whatever sort of pops into my spirit. Um, so this idea of set up idols in their hearts, that's something that repeats several times throughout throughout this chapter. And, and I think what, what that means to me is that idols necessarily aren't always physical things. The idol in our life isn't always the job we're going for. It isn't always the person that sort of steals our attention from God. It isn't always such a physical thing, but really idols and anything that separates us from God has its root in our heart. And so I'm going to write that down. Um, I'm going to write a little quotes and I'm going to write, set up idols in their hearts, set up idols in their hearts. I'm going to close the quotes and then I'm going to do a tiny parenthesis and I'm going to do a little verse reference. And I always write down a reference to what verse I'm pulling from so that if I'm ever going back through my notes when I'm making a seven minute sermon or something, I can more easily understand what I was talking about in the early morning because sometimes I can be a little incoherent. And so that verse uh, repeats itself several times. So it's verse three. It is verse four. It is verse seven. I think that's it. Verse three, four, and seven. And so I wrote, set up idols in their hearts from verse three, four, and seven. And I'm going to write some, all idols, 
whether physical or spiritual, are rooted in a divided heart. And so perhaps that's something to pray over for me today, that the Lord would give me an undivided heart and remove all idols from me. Um, so continuing to skim through now, uh, verse 5, I underlined, I will do this to recapture the hearts of the people of Israel. And down again in verse 8, um, the Lord says, then you will know that I am the Lord. And this is a theme that has been um, sort of showing itself all throughout this chat, this um, this book of Ezekiel. And that is, this is a repeating phrase, then you will know that I am the Lord. And I've written this down several times, and I wrote it down yesterday, actually, that um, that even the Lord's condemnation is born out of his desire for us to know him. Because in the prophets and in this chat, especially in Ezekiel, there's a lot of punishment. There's a lot of wrath. God sort of doesn't come off as this, like, pretty lovey-dovey, you know, everyone all in the family, God. He's much more like, I will separate myself from you. I will hide my face from you. There's wrath and all of these things that really we view as bad things. But in in this phrase, then you will know that I am the Lord. And in especially in the phrase of verse 5, I will do this to recapture the hearts of the people of Israel. We see God's heart behind wrath. And that is... Sorry, the video automatically stopped. Let's pick up right where we left off. Talking about verse 5, I will recapture the hearts of the people of Israel. And what that phrase does is it shows God's heart behind all of the wrath, behind all of the punishment, behind all of the exile. Um, and that is that God's heart is always to bring us closer to him. Everything he does is with the purposes of bringing us closer to him. So I'm going to write that down once again. Um, I'm going to write down once again, everything God does is to bring us closer to him. And don't forget, we have to put the verse references of what I'm talking about. So that's verse 5, where it says, I will recapture the hearts. And then it also, down in verse 8, it says, then you will know that I am the Lord. And sort of that's all that really popped out to me in this first section. Um, and so I would continue going through the rest of the chapter, but for the sake of time, I will not do that. And then that's sort of all I do as far as studying the Word. It usually takes me about 10, 15 minutes every morning. I know it's not a ton. I know it might underwhelm you, and I know some people might comment and say, oh, you should be spending more time in the Scriptures. But this is sort of what works for me, and the Lord really teaches me a lot in this. And I can really dig into some things. And um, so a couple things. Please um, notice that studying God's Word doesn't have to be super complicated. Um, I go through one chapter a day, and I read through the chapter twice. I underline things, and then I write down things that God puts on my spirit. So know that studying God's Word doesn't have to be complicated. And two, please don't take anything that I have said or written in this video to be hard theological fact. Um, these are sort of private moments usually where our quiet time is a time where we can search the Lord and we can ask questions of him and we don't necessarily always have to be right or perfectly theologically sound. Um, these are the times where we can sort of open our hearts to him and take risks and ask and question and you know all of those things and anytime I would ever put something like this in a video or write a blog post about any of this, I would make sure to go back and I would fact check, fact check, fact check, and pray over it and pray over it. Um, so 
but for the sake of authenticity, I didn't do that in this video. And so please don't take any of this as theological fact. This is just what the Lord is revealing to me in the moment. And that's pretty much all I do. Um, once I'm done with that, I'll, I then take some time and I pray, and maybe I'll make another video about what I do during my prayer time. But uh, that's a video for another day. So that is a day in the Word, Ezekiel 14. Thank you so much for watching. Uh, I would really appreciate on this one, really appreciate, if you all would comment below and let me know what you think of this video. Was this helpful? Would you like to see more videos like this? It's a very different type of video for us. Uh, it's very you know, low quality, not a lot of editing. Um, and so I want to know, was this helpful for you um, for, to watch me sort of go through my Bible study? Um, would you like to see more videos like this of me going through another day in the Word or my prayer time in the morning? Or do you not want to see more videos like this? Or if you do want to see more videos like this, uh, what would be, what's your feedback? How can we make them better? How can we make them more helpful? And um, I would really, really appreciate that. Also, I'd appreciate it if you would subscribe to the channel, share the video, um, hit us up on Twitter, Instagram, email us. You know the drill. And... Um, Please comment below, what do you think of this video? Yes or no? Thank you all so much. I love you all. I am going to drink the rest of my water and um, keep being awesome. There's the remote. Now I see you so clear.